Let me take you back to a story I brought you last year and I spoke with Steve Peake, who's the father of a little girl by the name of Suli. Suli has significant disabilities, some of which ended up uh, being life-threatening. Uh, Steve Peake, uh, welcome back to the studio. Thanks for coming in for 2017. Happy New Year to you. Same year and thanks for the opportunity. It was a pretty <coughs> tough year for you, Suli, and your family uh, last year. Just remind me briefly of uh, Suli's condition, if you would, please, Steve. Suli has an undetermined complex neurological disorder and refractory epilepsy. Um, refractory epilepsy is that uh, they don't respond to medical treatment. Her neurological disorder, whatever it is, is uh, causing her to regress and basically she is terminal and there's no cure for what she has. She's undergoing, I mean, she's under formal medical care with a neurologist and specialists at a, at a major Brisbane hospital, isn't she? Oh, yeah. We, um, we've used a lot of medications. She suffers a lot of side effects from medications. Some of them have stopped working and basically we actually just recently she was in hospital and they asked us approval to try a medication on her that's not suitable for children under 17 years of age. It did work good, stop the seizures, but the side effects are too, way too horrendous. For some time, by your own admission, you had been accessing cannabis oil. Why? Suli, the last medication she was on um, regularly caused her to ble have bleeding stomach ulcers, so it was decided with the hospital to wean her off it, and then her seizures started once she was halfway off. There was no other options for medication, so we decided to try cannabis oil and for a year she had the best year of her life. She got very sick in May last year with a bad virus which triggered her epilepsy and we had to go to a different oil, a stronger oil. So this is an un, a, a non-approved, non-TGA recommended, essentially illegal cannabis oil product. It is illegal, uh, th yes. That you uh, were accessing for Suli. Yes, it's and illegal. It, and it aided her, it reduced her seizures and aided her life extension. Twice, I can say it has definitely saved her life, once in hospital and once at home. And it, nothing, she's never been seizure free and whether she's using medication or cannabis oil, but cannabis oil gives her the best quality of life. And it's quality of life that you're trying to give your little girl at the moment. Yeah, quality of life. There's no, it, cannabis oil is not a cure for her and there is no cure, so. This is ABC Radio Brisbane. I'm Steve Austin. I'm talking with Steve Peake, father of, of Suli. Now, on the 4th of January this year, South Australian police raided the home of Jenny Hallam, who uh, is just a, an ordinary citizen like yourself who had her own family story in this area, but she was allegedly providing cannabis oil for a range of families like yourself around Australia, as I understand it, police raided her, uh, took the cannabis oil collection she had, but at this stage have not charged her with anything or she's not been subpoenaed. However, this uh, event in South Australia has had an impact or has an impact on on you here. What is that? The impact it's had on us is um, we are running out of oil. We have gotten a little bit extra from somebody else who uses the same oil. They've given us a little bit of theirs. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, regardless of what happens with Jenny now, uh, whether she gets charged or not, the damage has already been done. Um, it, it, we're running out of oil and so are other people. And we just don't know what's going to do, what, what we're going to do or what's going to happen now. So when that oil runs out, what happens for you? What happens for Suli? The Wednesday morning she got raided, we got a call saying she'd been raided and all oil had been confiscated, so we thought, well, we better start rationing the oil and restricting the use of it. So she normally has a midday dose and we, we skipped the midday dose. Well, quarter to six that night she started seizuring. So. What does that mean, Steve? That her seizures are, are going to become stronger and continue? Her seizures will continue. They Chances are they will get worse. Look, it's a medical fact. Even the hospital has said to us, you cannot stop something like this. It's like a medication. If you stop it abruptly, like any other anticonvulsant, chances are it will cause extra seizures, and that's what we're faced with. So the expected result is Sully's seizures will get worse? Yes. 
Yeah. What does the neurologist say? You have a so you have a specialist neurologist uh, who uh, who who watches Suli or who, uh, who who looks after Suli when you when she's not at home. Yeah. Look, the hospital can't. In all fairness to the hospital, they can't say or do anything. They can't change anything. The only thing that can be can help is the government. Now, the government says they have the the new laws coming in on the first of March. I spoke with the Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk this morning and asked, asked her directly if she was happy with the new medical cannabis laws that come in on the 1st of March and she said her government has done something about it. Okay, what they've done is absolutely nothing, I'm sorry. Now, there was a, um, a steering committee which was advising the government on medical cannabis and advising the government on the decisions they make. Now, on that steering committee, there was not one family member, not one person who's using medicinal cannabis. I spoke. But you're to not qualified. I mean, you'd expect. I mean, wouldn't you expect qualified, you know, medical, scientific, pharmacological specialists to be on the steering committee of that sort? Yes, but <clears throat> the the thing is, we are the stakeholders, and nobody has been using it. Nobody, nobody knows much about it. Like you can ask a specialist about it, and they know nothing about it. Now, I asked our daughter's specialist the other day, on the 2nd of March, will you write a prescription for my daughter for medicinal cannabis? And they this said, is after the new legislation kicks in, okay, here on, in Queensland? Yep. Mm -hmm. They said no. The reason why they said no is they know nothing about it. Um, how can they write a prescription for something they don't know where it comes from, what it is? We also have to provide scientific evidence that that product will be of benefit to our daughter Where's the scientific evidence of a product that you're not using that you don't know anything about? Well, as I understand it, you can access uh, medical cannabis oil from Canada and one of the European countries that is approved by the Therapeutic Goods Administration. Why don't you consider that? Um, cost. All families have to bear the cost. It's also a very long process um, to go through to try and get a medication which you don't even know if it's going to work anyway. And also... The clinical trials they're running, um, we've been advised by Cameron Dick through you to put our daughter on the clinical trials. Well, she has to go off the product she's using for... They have to have a washout period of a month. So she'll have nothing for a month to go on the trials, which is CBD only. And all the research shows that CBD and THC are the two that's needed. So the active ingredients uh, in the cannabis oil... Uh, is what uh, alleviates or eases the symptoms for yeah. for, door, for for people like your little girl. Yeah. Yep. So what does this mean? So the state legislation in Queensland won't actually solve or help your daughter's situation? Um, it looks like it won't help anybody. Now, this is not new. It's always been there that you've been able to apply through the TGA for, for an unapproved product. Mm -hmm. So it's not new legislation. It's, it's always been there. But we, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, what the government's done is they've also increased the penalties for people who, will, who are producing or using an unapproved product. So this is one of the reasons why your neurologist uh, wouldn't, won't sign anything because they, it's an unapproved product, so they could be charged under Queensland's legislation. Well, the product that our daughter's using, yes. It's... it's, a, it's what makes and you illegal? could be charged as well, Stephen, oh, yeah. as, as we, Sully's father. We could be, yes. And um, who knows what will happen after the 1st of March, whether we will be or not. So no change. After the, 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 the Queensland legislation was brought in that mirrors the federal uh, laws, there's no real change for your little girl. No. And to import a product, there's been figures thrown around of 3000 US dollars, 5000 US dollars a month, and the government's made it quite clear that families have to bear all the cost. It, it, I mean, I know you did a lot of searching in relation to this. Are there any scientists or researchers in Queensland that have the required knowledge or specialty area experience in this area here in Queensland? No, I don't think so. I don't know of any. Um, there's the Lambert Initiative down in um, New South Wales, mm -hmm. um, which was funded by Michael Lambert with, I think, it was $37 million. Okay. So how much does the oil cost? What we're using? Yes. Nothing. Nothing, okay. This woman does it out of the kindness of her heart. Okay. So the cost of using the legal um, uh, uh, Canadian or European oils is prohibitive and takes too long 
to get to a patient as far as you're concerned? Yeah, look, when our daughter's well, what we do at the moment with the oil we're using, when our daughter's well, we give her very small doses to because what happens is they build up a tolerance to any medication. So we keep the doses very small while she's well. So when she's sick, it gives us more room to increase the dosage. Now, under the, under the government legislation, you will get one week supply and then if the dosage has to change, you have to reapply again. And you have to reapply every 12 months. You have to go through that process again every 12 months. What does the neurologist say is the process, sorry, the prognosis for your little girl, Sully? There is no cure. We've had, we've had talks with the hospital about um, end of life, um, what, what they should do, what we should do. Um, yeah. Okay. It's not a good there, – there's no cure for her. Right. Now, I understand you had uh, some sort of discussion, or it was Steve Dixon, the former LNP member, now joined One Nation, that sponsored a petition for you. Uh, on uh, Queensland parliamentary website. What was the nature of that petition? The petition was to try and get some form of amnesty granted so we could continue using the cannabis oil in the hospital. Okay. Um, there was over 2,000 signatories. The response we got was um, that the government has already introduced uh, progressive legislation and as of the first, after the 1st of March, we should apply for a legal product. All right. Now, you've been trying to get a meeting, I think, with the Premier, the Deputy Premier and the Health Minister uh, to no avail so far. Is that right? Yes. Numerous emails have been sent off. Okay. Well, the Premier told me this morning that she'd make sure that she uh, would be happy to see you. She'd see you this week. Uh, so, at the very least, you'd be able to uh, meet the Premier. Um, I'll be keen to hear what comes of that meeting. Steve Peake, thanks for coming in. Thank you very much for the opportunity. That's Steve Peake, the father of Sully. Now, let's go to Steve Dixon.